I, I want to start off the conversation, first of all, uh, looking at the National Youth Orchestra and how things have been going on that front. Um, well, things have been going pretty good, I yeah. must say, yeah. And in fact, um, it gets better and better. Now this year we have Museid mm -hmm. coming in, directors, um, Kevin and the others. And what we are doing is we are concentrating not only on teaching the kids to play an instrument, but to teach the pedagogy. Mm -hmm. So all the little kids now who are doing clarinet, violin and, and everything else, they are actually doing courses designed to, to learn how to teach the instrument. Wow. Why is that such an important component? To ensure sustainability of any project, it's really important that there's local capacity to teach and to continue um, music education. So the last thing we want this workshop to be is, you know, one week we help out and leave and then that's where it ends. Our yeah. purpose here is to give um, the kids and the teachers at the National Youth Orchestra the tools and knowledge necessary for long-term progress, long-term sustainability and to increase local capacity within the country. Mm -hmm. Is it a standard within what you do that it's more a trainers of trainers exactly. kind of um, yeah. component? Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Now, when you talk about music and its empowerment to teach, however, not everyone can teach music. What are some of the skills that you are actually hoping to pass on in the pedagogy to make sure that they can uh, make that transformation uh, from a quantum leap, if you can even, <laughs> from student to teacher. Well, we really believe that one of the greatest qualities about music is its ability to instill a sense of cooperation and teamwork. So in a group like an orchestra, we hope to have mentors that will be able to foster um, some of those values in the younger students. Now, let's talk a little bit about music aid and how did that come into being and uh, what are the general objectives? Um, well, Music was founded in 2007, um, and since our founding, we have helped music schools in Afghanistan, Kyrgyzstan, Burma, and Haiti with donated instruments and materials, and also uh, volunteer teachers. Mm -hmm. And typically what we try to do, we travel to a country to assess the needs of whatever music school or orchestra we're working with, and then devise a plan that addresses those needs specifically, and um, helps the school or orchestra uh, develop um, within themselves. So our, our main goal is to, is to provide whatever the school or institution needs for sustainability. We, we're really all about sustainability and, and long-term progress. We want our impact to have longest, um, yeah, the longest uh, progress possible. Now, Kevin, you're the founder of this organization. What was the impetus for getting it started? Um, well, I grew up around the world. I started clarinet in Romania, and then um, shortly after, traveled to India. Mm -hmm. And studying clarinet and classical music in India was especially difficult because there were no instruments or materials available. What was available was extremely expensive to buy. And so every time I would go back to the United States to visit relatives, I would bring back instruments to give to my friends in, in the country that were trying to study music as well. And it was really successful. People sounded in so much better with, with good equipment. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a greater need. So it made sense to found an organization for tax purposes and to facilitate the growth of the organization. And how difficult was it to get other musicians on board? Uh, well, we actually had it, an application process, yeah. so from that group, we have 11 fellows here in Belize, mm -hmm. and they're all highly qualified, and uh, we've got a great pool of performers and teachers here. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them have a lot of international teaching experience already, so they're very familiar with how to approach a project like this. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at what you are doing in terms of trying to increase the reach, you talk about the challenges of uh, instruments, for example, as you travel from place to place. How do you uh, work around that? And do you also uh, have a concerted effort to actually incorporate what people have on the ground in terms of their instrumentation? Yeah. Um, do you mean in terms of local instruments? Yeah. Or just, yeah. We work with whatever. We, I mean, we think that music is important, not necessarily classical or you know any specific genre. It's just music that, in general, that has the benefits. Um, 
And so we work with whatever the country has. If they want to use whatever instrument for their local flavor of music, that's fantastic. And for example, in Belize, we brought an instrument repair technician here to repair all the instruments that they currently have and to also teach instrument repair. So once we leave, there will be three or four people that can hopefully repair whatever instruments um, are in Belize. That's excellent. How, how did this link get uh, established? Um, well, it, it got established through the OJCA. Uh -huh. And that is the university, sorry, university, the orchestra, uh -huh. juvenile orchestra of the America, of Central America, I think. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, um, yes. And um, through them, we now have students. In fact, we'll be having two students, Courtney Gillett and um, Cindy Burgos, going over to Ajka um, in this summer here to, to prepare for a concert they're having in Nicaragua and Guatemala mm -hmm. and through them they were able to get us to meet with Kevin from Muse. Mm -hmm. And what made Belize the right fit for what you were trying to accomplish with Muse? Um, it seemed like a great fit because they had recently started the orchestra three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of motivation, a lot of drive in the country but some groups of instruments were lacking in teachers. Yeah. So specifically for Belize um, lower strings such as cello and bass uh, needed a bit of support so we, we tried to focus our efforts on that and bring instruments to help with those areas and um, so you identified the musical gaps per se right right yeah we wrote a report we, yeah. we were here in march to, okay. to to visit the orchestra and talk to teachers and, and figure out what they needed no no brass instruments is something that it's a challenge yes, um, it in is. belize is that a particular um one of the points that you're looking at in terms of how you can improve that or make the transition um, and how to yes. improve the yeah. well, for instance we have uh, a horn player who is able to teach um, not only horn but trumpet and trombone and so he's been a great asset to the program this year um, and in addition to that we've also brought trumpets with us for donation so we've been increasing the amount of instruments that are available in Belize for the students to play yeah. What, what would you say is a challenge there, um, Colville, in terms of uh, the brass instrument uh, and its development or lack thereof within the Belizean uh, musical landscape? Well, um, I'll be quite honest with you, it just comes with knowledge. Um, I recall when we first got the strings program going at Palotti, it didn't sound too very nice. <laughs> but, <laughs> but to give kudos to Sister Therese and the Palatine nuns, they, what they did is they sent me out to um, New Orleans and Canada to get training in teaching, in teaching the instrument, and it made all the difference in the world. So, um, and I came back, and, uh, and others went afterwards, and, and before you know it, the strings program sounded really nice. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, that never happened with the winds. So most of the wind players, then they have done fantastic, given that they never had professional teachers. Many of them are self-taught. Self-taught. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then there's only so far you can go with technique mm -hmm. if it is all if it is all self-taught. Mm -hmm. In fact, that was one of the biggest reasons why we um, lean so heavily on music to bring in these teachers and have them teach people how to teach, especially for the winds. And I ask that question because just recently we had the conversation with. Frankie Reno yeah. and okay. talking about the challenges in terms of mm -hmm. you know trumpets uh, etc and other wind instruments mm -hmm. in terms of having them play and play on key and yes. be consistent, and consistent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. so um, when you're talking about that for a lot of people when you talk about the youth orchestra they still see it as a kind of elitist kind of you know kind of <coughs> on, you know taking so let's talk a little bit about yeah, how wrong. that is changed. No, no, no. But I'm just talking about public perception, and, and right? And I think and it's the buy-in to classical right. music uh, that that is is slow in starting. It's starting, but it's still a bit slow. Okay, the classics is extremely important. That is the best way for somebody to learn a skill, and also to, of course, appreciate other cultures. But you cannot get far on your instrument if you don't have classical training in terms of acquiring skill. Now the orchestra itself is the Belize National Youth Orchestra so it has got to have a Belizean flavor to it and in fact in this respect we've already begun arranging some of our own folk music 
and in fact one of them we had great success with was miami mm -hmm. we did mm -hmm. miami and we performed it twice and every time and we had one of your seat. participants come uh, perform mm -hmm. miami yeah. for us at our That's summer concert well, you should hear Where the everybody orchestra was do singing it. pop songs but he brought his uh yes. his flute yeah well the orchestra does it yeah and when we do it we do it with steel band involved as well not only just orchestral instrument we have steel band and we have the garufuna drums in it too as well and we're trying not to incorporate the marimba into our um, music as well, as well as, of course, the Creole drums and all the other different components for a Belizean society. So when you hear us, you'll get your own Belizean. I like how your face lights up. I know. <laughs> <coughs> He's trying to tell you this isn't anything elitist. But no. This is important because when you have your music fellows coming in, I would imagine it, it's also uh, a bit of mentorship and motivation as well um, because the challenges may be similar in the other countries that you've been. When you work with the young people here, uh, is that a part of the experience in being able to have them be comfortable in what they're doing and realize that the public will come around? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think that they, they all already have a lot of teaching experience. They already have experience mentoring. Yeah. Um, so they're, I don't think any of them are particularly worried. I think whether or not um, these kids have a, a future in music or whether there's a huge audience, the fact that these kids are pursuing a skill with so much passion is, is really important for the development. and the skills and, and um, attributes that they gain from that pursuit, they can apply to their life in so many different areas. So um, the discipline, the focus, just the fact that they learn that to get better at a certain skill, you have to practice. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. small idea can apply to math, you were telling me yesterday, yes, yeah. can apply to everything. And it's, it's not just music, but it's, it's sports, it's the arts, it's mm -hmm. so many things, so. In terms of, given the fact that you've had the opportunity to uh, visit different countries and look at what they have on the ground and try to build uh, on what they have. Uh, very often we don't get a sense of where our placement in the world and the challenges, how universal they may be and not peculiar to Belize. What's your assessment of the uh, orchestra and music in terms of where we're going and some of the challenges given the fact that you've had the opportunity to see other places? Yeah, um, well, I, th I think the, the greatest thing the Belizean Orchestra has going for it is that there's just so much passion, there's so much drive, there's so much willingness to learn and openness. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a new program, but we have a lot of faith that in a few years it's, it's going to be a very strong orchestra. And even from the last time we were here in March to now, it's, there's already been a tremendous amount of improvement, and I think that's going to increase exponentially. Um, so whatever gaps the orchestra has, I don't think that's that's a big deal. We can, you know, <laughs> they're they're fixable and um, yeah. yeah, really looking forward to seeing what the orchestra sounds like in two or three years. The really great thing about Belize is the sense of community here. So a lot of the older students really watch out for their younger kids. They are already mentors, even the ones who have learned instruments on their own. Mm -hmm. So it's a great thing to see here. Now. One, uh, one of the things uh, that uh, Koldo spoke about was the infusion of non-traditional instruments within the orchestra to create a uniquely Belizean sound. How do you interact as you go from place to place? Because you talk about the piece that you just played from Afghanistan. Um, how do you interact to make sure that the work, the, the work that you do also fuels uh, the cultural exchange and uh, that influences you move from place to place? Um, well, I mean, we, we try to <laughs> figure out what, what kind of music is played locally and then incorporate that with instruments that they have. And in some countries, it's, um, they use classical instruments to play their local music. So a lot of the time, as we saw with the viola and cello, they're not necessarily local Afghani instruments. Mm -hmm but they could still be used to play that kind of music. And so anyone in the orchestra learning an instrument, let's say it's clarinet or French horn, anything, they can always play Belizean music on that instrument. It's just a tool to express um, themselves and um, that can be applied to anything. 
Well, as our opening piece showed us, you obviously take away as well a bit of uh, the musical influence of the country you um, have worked. So let me ask you about uh, the type of music you've seen in Belize or you've heard in Belize that really stands out to you. Um, I guess every time we're driving to school, we turn on the radio, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> we we love the Caribbean influence of, okay. of music. The kettle drum, the rhythm, yeah. it's very good here. Yeah, the rhythm. I mean, we noticed you were talking yesterday that all the kids had fantastic rhythm. Oh yeah, that's been outstanding here. It's just <laughs> in their bodies. It's innate in Belize. Yeah, it's great. And in other countries, we really haven't seen that, so that's <laughs> going to be easier to work with. So. Score Belize. <laughs> <laughs> Rhythm. <Yeah. laughs> Most of us. <laughs> even even crossing the swing bridge, we were listening to people drumming outside. Yeah. You know the drum shop, and yeah. it's everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you hope at the end of the day will be the the benefits from this partnership in terms of what happens with the youth orchestra? and uh, music as it continues to progress? Well, the whole concept of the orchestra, modern concept of the orchestra, is that it is a tool, it is used as a tool to get young people socially involved and also acquiring skill. So at the end of the day, what we would like to see happen is similar to what you would want to see happen in sports, more and more young people in their spare time doing either education or acquiring skill whether it be sports or whether it be music. And, um, and whenever you do this, especially for an orchestra, you learn to get along with others. You learn to interact with others. In fact, just yesterday, at the, at the, um, when they were playing, um, I recall um, the, the horn player said, well, stop. I need you saxophones to listen for the trumpet when you're playing. And standing from where I was, the reason why he was playing very loud. And he was, he could, obviously, he was playing just to listen to himself. So an orchestra encourages you to listen to what the other person is playing. And it, in, in other words, it encourages interaction amongst young people. And that is very, very important. So at the end of the day, we want to foster those types of um, things in our young people. And also, we would like, for argument's sake, there will be a competition between schools. And each school can have their own big band going out there and perf and you know, like what you see happen in other parts of the world. Yeah. We want to see that happen. And as well as nice performances that can be done at the Bliss and Elsewhere with different groups, whether it be singing groups, orchestra, strings group, winds. That is the, um, the big plan for in the future. Now, let's talk a little bit. Obviously, the workshop has, has been going on. So let's talk a little bit about the formatting there yeah. and how long that will run and how it actually uh, evolves into the concert um, that will take place. That will take place. Yes. Um, well, what we are doing here is that in the mornings we are given lessons, private lessons, and then in the afternoon we are given the pedagogy lessons and then followed by um, sectionals and orchestra practice. And this goes right up until Saturday when we'll be having our major concert, and it's going to be a good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it involves the classics, and it also involves no bias at all. But that smile says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yes, it's not a plastic smile or a foul <laughs> smile. It is the real deal. Yeah. So on Saturday, the twenty-third of August, yeah, we'll be having our big concert at the Bliss. Everyone is um, encouraged to attend. It's going to be real nice. We've tried to keep the price down. It's only $20 to mm -hmm. try to encourage as many people to come as possible. Mm -hmm. And you can purchase your tickets at the Bliss. Mm -hmm. From what time to what time? It's going to be, we don't want to keep it too late, 7.30 until, we, it's not going to go past 10.30. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully an hour and a half at most, maximum two hours. And what can people expect if they come to the show? Beautiful. It's going to be nice, uplifting. <laughs> We're playing pieces from Tchaikovsky, real nice, beautiful music, as well as... <laughs> <laughs> we know what your favorite piece is. We don't have to guess, right? <laughs> and Kevin, uh, uh, what can you say to uh, people in terms of uh, why they should come and check out the show? Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to support a local orchestra. You know, I think every obviously all the parents should be there to yeah. <laughs> support their kids. Um, parents, parents. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's going to be great hearing local music played. Um, we're going to be playing along with the orchestra and also 
on Doing the first half. And we're going to be playing pieces from around the world, so there's going to be a wide variety of music to listen to. Um, I think it's just going to be a really great time. It's going to be a lot of fun. The kids have been working for over two months, so it's going to be a fantastic concert. Wow. All, right. All right, so the show is Saturday the 23rd at The Bliss. Tickets are $20, and That's it right. starts at 7. 7.30. 7.30. Yeah, we'll tell them 7 so you start at 7 <laughs> 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 but thank you all so much for joining us uh, this is absolutely this is an excellent initiative that you have uh, going I know uh, we're preparing Eric for another her way yeah. over you can so sneak away Eric <laughs> so we have one final piece to uh, close off this particular segment uh, Kevin Aaron Co um, Colville and of course the rest of the fellows that are here thank you very much for joining us thank you and uh, we look forward to Saturday all right Okay. Congratulations on a good uh, marriage in music. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right, we shift know. over now to uh, a performance that will close off this segment. And when we come back, it will be for the finalists of If You Can Sing It, Bring It. This is an African inspired piece called Umoja by composer Valerie Coleman. Thank mm -hmm. you. 